Summon the Heroes presents a patriotic presentation of an American hero. Today we honor Thomas Jefferson, the third president of the United States. Before we go any further, I am honored to be able to do these presentations, and I need to give credit to someone, somewhere. Um, the following presentation, minus the pictures and the upfront and the closing remarks, have come by me via email probably over the last five years a dozen times. I'm talking with friends. Um, they get the same things and oftentimes pass them on to me. So I want to give credit to whoever put this, uh, the, the words together and looked up some of the quotes. And I believe that we will honor uh, President Jefferson, but honor an, an American hero and get a glimpse of him for a few minutes together here. His portrait's on the $2 bill. Thomas Jefferson was a very remarkable man who started learning very early in life, and he never stopped. At five, he began studying under his cousin's tutor. At nine, he learned Latin, Greek, and French. It's a picture of his family. At 14, he studied classical literature and additional languages. And at 16, he entered the College of William and Mary, and he also could write in Greek with one hand while writing the same in Latin with the other. I cannot even imagine that. Here is William and Mary. At 19, he studied law for five years, starting under George Wythe. At 23, he started his own law practice. And at 25, he was elected to the Virginia House of Burgesses. At 31, he wrote the widely circulated Summary View of the Rights of British America. And with that, he retired from his law practice. 32, he was a delegate to the Second Continental Congress. And at 33, a year later, he wrote the Declaration of Independence. When he was 33, he took three years to revise Virginia's legal code and wrote a public education bill and a statute for religious freedom. And at 36, he was elected the second governor of Virginia, succeeding Patrick Henry. When 40, he served in Congress for two years, and less than a year later, uh, he was the American minister to France and negotiated commercial treaties with European nations, along with Ben Franklin and John Adams. At 46, he served as the first Secretary of State under George Washington, and at 53, he was the Vice President and was elected President of the American Philosophical Society. Fifty-five, he drafted the Kentucky Resolutions and became the active head of the Republican Party. And finally, at 57, he was elected the third president of the United States. But his life has, does not stop there, because as president and beyond, uh, things in his life and his accomplish accomplishments started to even get greater and bigger. While president, at 60, he obtained the Louisiana Purchase, doubling the size of the nation. And a year later, he was elected to his second term as president. This, this election, it was a landslide. The first one, it had to go to the Electoral College. It was tied. 
and at 65, at the end of his second term, he retired to Monticello, his home. At 80, he helped President Monroe shape the Monroe Doctrine. And at 81, almost single-handedly, he created the University of Virginia and served as its first president. When he was 83, he died on the 50th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence on July 4th, along with the second president of the United States and his friend, John Adams. I will read you the, the Monticello graveyard uh, plaque and uh, the entire estate is still in the family and belongs to them, uh, not just where he is buried, but others in the family. This graveyard had its beginning in an agreement between two young men, Thomas Jefferson and Dabney Carr, who were schoolmates and friends. They agreed that they would be buried under a great oak which stood here. Carr, who married Jefferson's sister, died in 1773. His was the first grave on this site, which Jefferson laid out as a family burying ground. Jefferson was buried here in 1826. The present monument is not the original, designed by Jefferson, but a larger one erected by the United States in 1883. Its base covers the graves of Jefferson, his wife, his two daughters, and of Governor Thomas Mann Randolph, his son-in-law. The graveyard remains the property of Jefferson's descendants and continues to be a family burying ground. Jefferson really knew his stuff. John F. Kennedy held a dinner in the White House for a group of the brightest minds in the nation at that time. With them gathered there, he made this statement. This is perhaps the assembly of the most intelligence ever to gather at one time in the White House, with the exception of when Thomas Jefferson died alone, or dined alone. Incredible. And here are some of the sayings of him, and just in closing. When we get piled upon one another in large cities, as in Europe, we shall become as corrupt as Europe. The democracy will cease to exist when you take away from those who are willing to work and give to those who would not. It is incumbent on every generation to pay its own debts as it goes, a principle which, if acted on, would save one half the wars of the world. My reading of history convinces me that most bad government, res government results from too much government. No free man shall ever be debarred the use of arms. The strongest reason for the people to retain the right to keep and bear arms is, as a last resort, to protect themselves against tyranny in government. The tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. To compel a man to subsidize with his taxes the propagation of ideas which he believes disbelieves and abhors, is sinful and tyrannical. I predict future happiness for Americans if they can prevent the government from wasting the labors of the people under the pretense of taking care of them. Thomas Jefferson, our third president, we salute him and thank the Lord for his life and his ministry and what he left behind. I invite you to watch other Summon the Heroes. You can find them on my playlist throughout YouTube or just uh, scan through the videos that are up. And uh, thank you again for watching. God bless you.